This is the second video in the lessons for section 12.1 discussing the graphs of trig functions. The first video discussed amplitude. This video is going to discuss period. So the period of a function is going to be looking at that b part in the y equals a times the sine of bx plus c plus d. Now we are going to be looking here at b. So the period is the distance it takes. We're talking about x distance here to complete one full cycle. So that was what we were talking about before. We had a 2 pi period for a standard curve. We can calculate the period as 2 pi, that standard, divided by the b in our general form. So if there is a number here in front of x within the parentheses there, then that is going to affect how the graph looks. It's going to affect the period. Um, for standard sine of x and cosine of x graphs, the period is 2 pi. which we already discussed. So let's take a look at some examples. We want to identify the amplitude in the period just based off of the function. So looking here again, amplitude is that number out front. So in this case, we have our functions here, y equals, in the first case, our amplitude is four, and our period is going to be two pi divided by 2, which is just pi. So I want you to pause the video here and complete the next three, and then resume the video to check your answers. So you should have found for part b that your amplitude here is the 1 half, the number out front, and again cosine has a period of 2 pi over b. b in this case is 3, so our period is 2 pi over 3, and that's again how long it would take you to complete one full cycle of the cosine curve. For part c and d, we have to be a little careful here because we have this negative out front. Uh, the negative sign is not actually part of the amplitude, it just tells you that the curve is going to be flipped over from the normal curve, or the typical curve. Uh, the Amplitude in this case would just be a 1 out front, but like I said, since we have that negative here, it is flipped. So we'll just kind of note that. Uh, and then again, period is going to be 2 pi over our b here, which was 1 fourth. So 2 pi divided by 1 fourth is 8 pi. Uh, remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So I've kind of got that off to the side over here, uh, how you get 8 pi if you, if it's been a while since you've dealt with fractions. Uh, again, d, uh, it's going to be flipped. We've got an amplitude of 2, and then our period is going to be 2 over that 1 half. Uh, so 2 pi over 1 half, again, is going to give you 4 pi. So let's take a look at how that affects our graph. So we're going to do several examples of these just so you get the hang of it and you have lots of practice before you do the homework on your own. We want to find the amplitude and period of each of these, and then we're going to graph them. So we're going to start off simple. We've got y equals sine of 4x. Our amplitude is just 1. There's nothing in front there, so it's understood to be 1. Our period is going to be 2 pi divided by 4, and if you reduce that, it is going to be pi over 2. Now that's very small as far as graphing is concerned, uh, so we want to adjust our scale. Instead of making these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, we probably want to work with radians. It's just a little bit easier. And if you want to, you can it's almost even better to give two segments for each quadrant or for each quarter of the graph. So in this case, I'm going to say, okay, 2, 4, 6, 8, and that's going to get me to pi over 2. So this halfway point here would be pi over 4 if you want to fill in. 
and that's perfectly fine to leave just those marks as long as we are consistent. Again, if you could go out another 4, you would have 3 pi over 4, and if you wanted to get to a full pi, you got another 4, and then that would be pi there. Uh, we should go backwards as well, uh, negative pi over 4, go back another 4 to negative pi over 2. Um, you can go back further as well so that we can get our full two, yeah, we would have our full two cycles here because we only need to go out to pi for our two, our two cycles. Uh, similarly with y, it's up to you how big you want to do this. I'm actually going to mark one here. Uh, I know that's four units up, but it'll just make the graph a little bit easier to draw. So again, remember we said that this is pi over two, this is our final point. We want to divide this into quadrants. So pi over four, pi over eight, 3 pi over 8 are our quadrants. For sine, we start at 0. We go up to our amplitude, in this case 1. We go back down to 0. We go to our negative amplitude, so in this case negative 1. And then we go back to 0. So I'm going to change colors here just so we can kind of see those points clearly. Again, start at 0, go up to the amplitude, back to 0, down to the negative amplitude, and back to 0. And then we just draw in our nice sine curve for one cycle. Uh, we can repeat that. Again, we're already at 0. Uh, we got our quarter marks here. This would be a quarter, a half, three quarters, and a full cycle. So again, we're going to go back up to 1, then down to 0, then down to negative 1, then back to 0. And again, we just connect those dots in a nice smooth curve, and we get our second cycle. It doesn't look quite as nice as the first one, um, but it'll do. So again, like I said, the best thing to do for a lot of these is to break them down into the quadrants and then connect those dots. So let's try another example, uh, cosine of x over 2. Uh, again, our amplitude in this case is just simply 1. And our period is going to be, and this is where you have to be careful, this is really cosine of 1 half x. Cosine of 1 half x is the same as cosine of x over 2. We can split that up like that. So our period is going to be 2 pi over 1 half which we said before gets us to a period of 4 pi. So that's rather large. Uh, so again, if we kind of want to just look at every two increments as a quadrant, 2, 4, 6, 8, make that 4 pi. So you don't have to make the scale the same on all of these. Um, it makes life a little bit easier. Uh, this would be 2 pi here. This would be pi. This would be 3 pi. And then we've got our four quadrants there. Uh, again, our amplitude is 1, so I'll put that here, and negative 1 down here. So now when we want to draw a graph, again, cosine now is going to start at 1, so that's the difference. Sine starts at 0, cosine starts at 1. After that, they follow the same pattern. So we're going to start at 1, go down to 0, go down to negative 1 at the halfway point, back up to 0, and then we'll finish our cycle at 1. Again, we want to make this a nice smooth curve, so do not make that a sharp edge up at the top. Uh, connect down to make our nice smooth curve, and we get something that looks a little bit like that for our first cycle. Again, we want to complete at least two cycles for every graph. So there's 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi, 8 pi, those are our next four quadrants. Again, we're already up at 1. We're going to go to 0, then negative 1, then 0, then back up to 1. So again, we're going to complete that nice rounded curve. And we have our two cycles, which ends up kind of looking like a W. So take your time, look these over, make sure everything makes sense uh, as far as drawing these curves. Let's try another example. This one kind of shows you how you should 
do the various steps as far as getting to the final answer. This here is our final answer, uh, y equals negative 3 cosine of 2x. So in our first case, our amplitude is simply just 1, but our period has shifted. It's 2 pi over 2. That's our number in front of the x. So we just have a period of pi. It's shortened by half of the original. And let's just look at drawing that one first. So again, we want to go out four quadrants, so we'll put pi here, we'll go out another four, and put two pi there. Uh, our amplitude, uh, we'll put one. Since we're going to have to go to three, we want to be careful here. Um, let's start off with our amplitude here at this kind of third mark down. So if we were just going to draw y equals cosine of 2x, uh, again, we've got our quarter marks, our quadrant marks. Uh, we would start with 1, because we've got cosine, cross at 0, go down to negative 1, come back and cross at 0, and then come back to pi. So that's one full cycle. Again, we would do our next four quadrants. Uh, we're going to go down to 0, and then down to negative 1, and then back to 0, and then back to 1. So that would be if we draw that first curve. And if you want to, since this isn't the final version, you can kind of make it a dotted line. so that we know that's not our final version. Next, we're going to look at what happens when we flip the curve. So we're going to look at just the negative. And in this case, all we're going to do is we're going to take this blue curve and we're going to flip it over. So instead of starting at 1, we're going to start at negative 1. Uh, we're still going to go through um, at our quarter mark, hit our amplitude at our halfway mark, back down to the axis at our three-quarter mark, and then back, back to our starting point here. Uh, and then again, to complete the second cycle, we'll just repeat that over again. And again, uh, we're just doing the flip of what we had before. Uh, again, you can go through and kind of make that a dotted line if you want to, since this isn't the final version. And then finally, we're going to come to this negative 3 here. Uh, again, your amplitude, your final amplitude is 3 here, but it is flipped because it's negative. Uh, and then the period here is still going to be the same. It's going to be that 2 pi over 2. And so nothing is changed as far as the period goes. We're still going to end up stopping here at pi for our first cycle. Uh, the difference here is we're going to have to go up to 3. So if this was 1, uh, we're going to go up another 3 to get to 2, and then another 3 to get to 3. We're also going to have to do that in the negative directions. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And so essentially what we're going to have here is a stretched out version of that green curve. Uh, instead of starting here at negative 1, we're going to start at negative 3. We're still going to cross at the axis. We're still going to reach up here at our amplitude for the halfway mark, cross the axis, and then again at the amplitude for our um, finishing point. We're going to end up at that negative 3. So your final curve ends up being this stretched out version. Uh, again, if you want to complete the second cycle, you just repeat this process. And this brown curve here is your final version. Now you can do this all at once, and we'll talk about how to do that later. Uh, but for right now, I just kind of wanted to show you what each one of those things is doing. Uh, if you start off, the 2x here is changing your period, so it's shortening your period. Um, the green curve here is going to flip it over, that negative, and then the 3 is going to stretch it out uh, in the y direction so that you end up with this stretched out, flipped over curve, um, but it is also compressed on the x-axis. So the brown curve here is your final version. So I want you to pause the video here and try example 7, similar to what we did in the previous example. So uh, for all of these curves, you have an amplitude of 1, 
So they're all going to be the same height here. Uh, the difference here is with the period. The first curve is the typical standard sine curve, so the period is just 2 pi. You complete a full cycle in 2 pi. You've got your quarter up to get to 1, then down to the axis, then to your 3 quarter point at the other amplitude, and then up at 2 pi to finish at the axis. Uh, the green curve here would be what happens if you do two cycles in that amount of time. Uh, so that's what that's saying here. That means you got your period is 2 pi over 2, meaning you have to complete a full cycle in pi because you've got to get 2 done in 2 pi. So again, you've got one cycle here and then another cycle in the time it took us to do a single cycle in the blue curve. Finally, if you look at the brown curve, uh, we've got sine of x over 2, meaning if x over 2 is really the same thing as 1 half x, because that x would just go up top when we multiply. Uh, so what we have here is that we've got b is 1 half, so that gives us a period of 4 pi. Uh, so that means we are getting half a cycle in the typical amount of time. So we've got half a cycle at 2 pi, and then the other half to get us to 4 pi. So that's what those three sine curves look like. Let's look at another example here. Uh, again here, all you can see here is that the amplitude is going to be different for these two. Um, so if we draw the original function here, we know that our amplitude is 1, our period is 2 pi over 1 half, which is 4 pi. So we will draw that 2, 4, 6, 8, we'll draw 4 pi here. We'll go out another 2, 4, 6, 8 and get to 8 pi. Uh, we'll go backwards as well, at least 1 for negative 4 pi. Uh, again, we're going to have to get up to an amplitude of 3, so I'm going to put 1 here and negative 1 here. Sine again starts at 0. We need our quadrants, so we've got 2, 4, 6, 8 is our quadrants. So we would start at 0. We would go up to our amplitude, down to 0, down to negative 1, and back to our um, complete our cycle. I just realized I put the 4 pi in the wrong spot. It should be back here. Okay, uh, to do another full cycle, again 0, we got our quadrants, 2, 4, 6, 8. Uh, so we're going to go up to 1, back to 0, down to negative 1, and then back to 0. So we're going to complete again that full cycle. Uh, so the only difference here is we're going to have an amplitude of 3 for the second graph, so that's going to stretch it or compresses them if you have a fractional amplitude. Um, and the period stretches and compresses things horizontally. So our period is still 4 pi, that didn't change, so we still have the same 4 quarters. Only difference here now is that we are going to go up to 3. So we're going to start at 0, our amplitude is 3, back down to 0, down to negative 3, back to 0, and back up to 3. So there's our fir first cycle. To go through our second cycle, we got back up to 3 then 0, then negative 3, then 0. So again, this got stretched vertically, whereas up in the previous example, the brown curve here got stretched horizontally, and the green curve got compressed horizontally. Okay, we have one more example here. I want you to pause the video and try it on your own, and then resume to find out how you did. So for this one, you should have found your amplitude was 2 and your period was 2 as well. Uh, again, you've just got that pi in front of the x, so that gives you a period of 2, which is perfectly fine. You don't have to have pi. A lot of times we do, but you don't necessarily have to. Um, and so on your x-axis, you just use whole number increments. It's perfectly fine. Um, this kind of puts everything together. Again, if you kind of break it down into quadrants, um, to get to 2, we would go at a half, then 1, then 3 halves, then 2. Again, we're going up to our max, down to our low, and we're completing two full cycles. So this concludes the video for section 12.1. The next video will discuss phase shift, which addresses that C in the A times sine of BX plus C plus D.